All right, so y'all go ahead and do the factoring and the math knowledge question for today. Pause the video, and then once everyone is finished, you can unpause the video, and I'll go over the correct answers. So for this factoring, you're going to start by multiplying the 2 by the 20 to remove it. And so you're going to have x squared minus 13x plus 40. The two numbers that you're going to want to use are negative 5 and negative 8. And so when you factor, make sure that re you replace your 2. And then only the second set will reduce. And so we're going to have 2x minus 5. And then we're going to have x minus 4. And so this would be your answer for the factoring question. For the math knowledge question, we have uh, two squares. One is shaded and one is not. They tell us that this is an x and this is a 2x. And so we need to figure out the side length of the smaller square, this right here. And the way we're going to do that is to use Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to do x squared plus 2x squared equals c squared. Now you notice that I put parentheses around the 2x before I squared it because you have to square both the 2 and the x. So when you square that, you're actually going to have 4x squared. And so x squared plus 4x squared is 5x squared. And so you get that equals c squared. And if you take the square root of that, you get the square root of 5 times x. So the length of this side is the square root of 5 times x. So now we need to find the area of each square. So the area of the shaded square is going to be the square root of 5x times the square root of 5x. Which if you multiply the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, you get 5. And then x times x is x squared. For the square a, b, c, d, the side length here is going to be 3x because this side length here is x. So for its area, we're going to have 3x times 3x, which is going to be 9x squared. So it says the fraction of the area of square a, b, c, d is shaded. So the shaded part is 5x squared. The total is 9x squared. And so those x squareds cancel, and we're left with just d, 5 over 9. Okay, so that's how you would do those two. So we're going to be looking at lesson 75, and then we're also going to look at lesson 95 and 97. They're all dealing with circles, and so we're going to do all of those together. But you're only going to have one problem set for homework, okay? So first we're going to look at lesson 75, writing the equation of a circle. So hopefully you'll understand how to write the equation of a circle. After that, we're going to look at lesson 95. It deals with introducing translating and dilating circles. And then we're going to look at concentric circles. So looking at this example, what is the equation of a circle centered at the origin that has a radius of 9? So if we have an equation of a circle and its center is at the origin, you're just going to have x squared plus y squared equals radius squared. And so that would be your general formula, or your, I mean your standard formula for the radius for the equation of that circle. x squared plus y squared equals radius squared. Okay? So that's if it's centered at the origin. If it is not centered at the origin, if it's centered at hk, then you're going to do x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Make sure that you do x minus h and y minus k. And then don't forget the squares on each of those terms. So let's look at this example. If one point on our circle has a coordinate of negative 6, 14, let me show that right here, we want to write the equation of this circle m. Okay? So what we need to do is find the center, and so if you notice, it's not going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12, it's going by 2's. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, and then 2, 4, 6. So our center is at negative 6, 6. So when we do our part A, we're going to say x minus a negative 6, so that's going to be x plus 6 squared and then y minus k, which is 6, squared, and then equals, now we have to find the radius. 
But the reason they told you this point here was so that you could figure out the distance between those two. And so you can just count up two, four, six, eight. And so you can write eight squared or you can write 64. Either one of them is fine with me. Um, just don't write 64 squared. Okay. So now it says circle N is concentric with circle M. So if you're not familiar with that, it means it has the same center. But it has a radius of 5. And it asks, what is its equation? So the only thing on this one that's going to change is the radius because it has the same center. So we're going to still have the x plus 6 squared plus y minus 6 squared. And then we're going to have equals 25 because the radius is a 5. Okay? So that's how you would do those two parts. Looking at the next example. On these, we want to graph each circle. So for the first one, we're going to graph it over here. And you'll do need to do these on graph paper. So our center for part A is at 0, 0. So you're going to put a dot at the origin, at the center. And then our radius is a not 36. It's a square root of 36, so it's a radius of a 6. So what you do on these, you go left and right 6, and you go up and down 6. And so if you count left and right 6, and then you go up and down 6, so you're going to have your center, and then you're going to have four other dots. Okay? So that's what it looks like right now. After you do that, you're going to connect your dots, and you want to make a circle. Okay? And I'm using the slate, so it's making it a little bit harder for me to actually make my circle here. Okay, so there's a circle that I came up with. As you can see, it's not 100% um, circular. I don't want you to have straight lines here, so don't do something like this. It's not a square or a rectangle or a rhombus. It does have curved sides. So don't do that red one, okay? Make sure. Make sure that it looks more like that blue one, okay? So now let's look at the next one. It has a center. I'm going to write the formula for you. X minus H and then Y minus K. So if you look here, that means that our H is a 2 because it's X minus H. So we have X minus 2. So our H is a 2. And then if you look here, we can rewrite Y plus 2 as Y minus a negative 2. And so that means that our k is going to be a negative 2. Basically, whatever sign you have here, whatever sign is in the parentheses here, you can flip it to get it to the number that's over here. Okay, And then the radius here is going to be a 3, because the square root of 9 is 3. So the first thing you're going to do is go to 2, negative 2. And then you can go left and right 3 and up and down three. And then you're going to connect your dots, okay? And make sure that you do them in a circle. And you actually should hit all of your dots. Okay, so I should have come up a little bit further here. Okay? And so that's what they should look like. So looking at the next example, we have an unmanned spacecraft. It orbits the moon at 200 kilometers above the surface, and it says that the radius of the moon is uh, 1,800. So we have a moon here, and the radius is 1,800. And then we've got a little thing that orbits 200 outside of it. So what would be the radius of the orbit of the spacecraft? It's going to go around like this. So it's not going to have a radius of a 200. That'd be a little bitty circle. It's bigger than that. 
its radius is actually this whole thing, which is 2,000. Um, it didn't tell us that it was centered anywhere or anything like that, so we're just going to say x squared plus y squared, and then equals radius squared. And so your radius is 2,000, so if you square that, you're going to get 4 million, because you're going to have six zeros. Okay, so let's look at some practice problems for this lesson. Y'all pause the video and try them, and then I'll show you the answers. So it says if x, y is a point on a circle centered at the origin with a radius of a 3, what is the length of pm, and what is the equation of the circle? So p is going to be on your circle, and so what is the length between the circle center and any point on the circle? That's the length of the radius, so pm is 3. And what's the equation of the circle? It's centered at the origin, so we do x squared plus y squared, and then equals 3 squared, which is 9. Looking at the next one, write an equation for circle A with the radius of square root of 2 that's centered at the origin. So we're going to have x squared plus y squared equals the square root of 2 squared is actually just a 2. And so that would be your equation for that circle. Looking at the next set of examples, <clears throat> try practice problem C and D, and then I'll go over them. So the equation for circle B, we need to find the center. The center is at 2, 0, and then the radius is at 1, 2, 3, 4. The radius is a length of 4. So we're going to say x minus 2 squared plus if you want to do y minus 0 squared, you can, but what I would prefer that you write is just y squared. But if you do that, I'm not going to mark it wrong, but I want you to get in the habit of just doing y squared. Okay, so that would be your answer for C. For D, it's concentric and has a radius of 3.5. So that means that it has the same center. So we're going to have x minus 2 squared plus y squared and then equals r squared. So 3.5 squared is 12.25. So that'd be your answer for that one. So see if you can graph these two. And then once y'all finish graphing them, we'll go over them. So the center for E is at the origin. So it's just an x squared plus y squared. And the square root of 6.25 is 2.5. So we're going to go over 2.5 in each direction. And we're going to go up and down in each direction, 2.5. And then you're going to connect your dots to make your circle. And I know that's not a great circle. Hopefully yours looks slightly better than that one, but that would be the basic shape of it. Okay, looking at the next one. The center is going to be at negative 1, 3. Remember, it's x minus h, so this is x minus a negative 1, and then y minus k, so our k is a 3. So we're going to go to negative 1, 3, and then the radius is a 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. And so you have those four points, and then you just need to connect them. And so your circle will look something like that. Now we're going to look at lesson 95, equations of circles, dilating and translating. I do want you to start a new page of notes of these. You can put it right after 75, or if you want, you can mo keep moving it until it's in its proper um, location after lesson 74. Doesn't matter to me, but I do want it to be on a separate sheet of paper from the lesson 75. So we're looking at translating and dilating. To translate a circle, you're going to identify the center of the circle, translate the center, and write the equation for a circle with the same radius as the new center. So on a circle, all you do to translate it is to translate the center. 
Translating a circle does not affect the radius of your circle. So your radius is not going to be affected. It's going to stay the same. If you apply dilation, you apply dilation to the radius and the center of the circle only. So let's look at this example. The equation they give us is x minus 7 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 36. You want to translate the circle 5 units left and 3 units up. So first we need to figure out what the center of this equation is. So the center is going to be 7, negative 3. So it's going to go 5 units to the left, and then it's going to go up 3 units. So if we go 5 to the left, that's affecting the x value, and it's going to subtract 5. So 7 minus 5 is going to give us a 2. And then if it goes 3 units up, it's added negative 3, and we're going to add 3, and that'll get us to a 0. So that'll be the new center. So we're going to have x minus 2 squared plus y squared and equals 36 because the radius, when you translate, it does not change. Okay, and so now you want to sketch both circles. So you're going to go to 7, negative 3. I'm going to go by 2's on this one. So 2, 4, 6, 7, and then 2, negative 3. We're going to go left and right 6. And I'm going to draw a circle there in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and do the points for the other one. Its center is at 2, 0. So that's right here. And then go left and right 6. and up and down six. Okay. And so if you draw your circle, they should look something like that. Have the computer draw it for me so that they look a little bit better. Okay, so let's look at this example. We have the equation, it's centered at the origin because it's x squared plus y squared, and the radius is a four. It says to apply a dilation centered at the origin with a scale factor of a 3. So since it's centered at the center of the circle, the only thing that's going to be affected by the dilation is the radius. So the radius was a 4, and so when we dilate it by a factor of 3, we just multiply it by 3. So 4 times 3 is 12, so that's your new radius. And so we're going to have x squared plus y squared equals 144 because that's 12 squared and so that's the new equation and it wants us to sketch both on the coordinate plane so both of them have a center of zero and then i'm going to go by twos again so we're going to go out four in each direction and you'll draw a circle okay and then we're going to go out 12 because that's our new radius. Okay. And now this circle probably won't look quite as good as that last one. Actually turned out okay. So that's what they should look like, something along those lines. Okay, moving on, we've got another example. We want to apply a dilation centered at the origin with a scale factor of a one half. So on this one, since it's centered not at the origin, it's centered at four, five, and it has a radius of four, and then the dilation is centered at the origin, you have to apply a, the scale factor to the center and the radius. The only time that you only apply it to the radius is when the circle and the dilation have the same center. So if this had been centered at the, center, the circle center, then we would only apply the dilation to the radius. Okay, so whenever you have a dilation, if it's centered at the same spot as the circle, 
then the dilation only applies to the radius. But if they're centered at two different places, then you have to apply the dilation to the center of the circle and to the radius. So we're just going to multiply our center by one half. So you're going to have 2, 2.5, and then we're going to multiply our radius by one half, which is going to give us a 2. So our new equation is going to be x minus 2 squared plus y minus 2.5 squared equals 4. Okay, so that's the equation for the new circle. And now they want us to sketch both. So I'm going to do the new one in red, but I'm going to do the old one in blue. So I'm going to go over 4 and then up 5. And I have a radius of 4. And I'm going to end up a little bit off of my graph here. And then I'm going to sketch that circle in just a second. And then I'm going to go over 2. I'm going to go up 2.5. So that's going to put me about right there. And then I'm going to go left 2, right 2, and then up and down 2. Okay. I'm going to get the computer to graph those just so that you can make sure that your graph looks pretty close to this one. So that's what it should look like, something similar to that. Okay. So let's look at this example. We have a city's tornado warning siren appears on the map below. The siren is audible to everyone that's in a three unit radius. So we've got this siren here and we have a three unit radius. It wants us to translate it and dilate it, a volume adjustment. So the siren is audible to everyone. in the city that is given by this little rectangle okay so everyone in our city so now you don't actually have to do a translation and a dilation you can just do a dilation um, they wanted to move the siren so that they could do the smallest dilation possible but I have had students that have come up with um, dilations that work without having to translate but we are going to practice moving it and also dilating it okay now I know that if you dilated it by a million then that would obviously work but we don't want it to be audible to the entire world okay so we just want it to be a little bit bigger than our city but we don't want it to just be excessive about it so what we want to do is move the siren to the center of the circle I mean to the center of the city so I'm gonna move that over a little bit so if you look here left to right the center is going to be Negative 2 plus 3 is a 1, and then half of that. So we're, it's going to have to be at a 1 half, so a 0 0.5. And then up and down, negative 4 plus 5 is a 1. And divide that by 2, you get a 1 half. So we would want to put the siren at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, right there. That would be the center of the city. Now, if you look, going left to right, that length is a lot smaller than going up and down. So if I want to go so that I have it to come right here, that would be a radius of one, two, three, four and a half. So I need my radius to be bigger or equal to 4.5. So right now it's at three. If I double it, if I multiply it by two, that'd be a six. Is that going to be big enough for the radius? Mm -hmm. So we are going to let our dilation be a 2. So our translation would be to move it here. So to do that, we're at 1, 2. So we would need to move 1.5 down and 0 0.5 left. And then we will want to dilate it by a factor of a 2. Okay, so that's how you would do that problem. So we're going to look at some practice problems here. We have the equation of a circle at x plus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 16. We want to write the equation after it shifted 6 to the right.
our current center is at negative 2, 1. So if we go to the right 6, that's going to affect this negative 2. And so we add 6 to that, and we're going to get 4, 1. So that's going to be our new center. So we're going to say x minus 4 squared plus y minus 1 squared. And then the radius stays the same, so equals 16. And then draw those on the coordinate plane. We would have negative 2, 1. And we're going to go, I'm going to go by 2s. No, I'm not. 1, 2, 3, 4. I won't go by 2s because I already drew my center. Okay, and then if you connect those, your circle should look something like that. And then we're going to go to 4, 1. We're going to go left and right 4. And then up and down 4. And so there would be your other circle. Okay. Looking at the next one, we want to dilate it with a factor of 0.5. So this circle is centered at the origin, and the dilation is centered at the origin. The scale factor of 0.5 is only going to be applied to the radius. So our radius is 5. So our new radius, we're going to multiply it by 0.5, and we're going to get 2.5. So the equation for our circle, we're going to have x squared plus y squared, and then 2.5 squared is going to be... 6.25. Okay, so it says write the equation for and sketch the dilated circle. So that's the equation for it. Now we're going to center it at the origin because that's where its center is and the new radius is at 2.5. So we're going to go out 2.5 in all four directions. And so then you're just going to graph your circle. Okay, looking at the next one, find the equation of a circle after it's dilated by a factor of 4. So our center is at 2, 1, and our radius is a 1 because the square root of 1 is 1. So by a factor of 4, that means we need to multiply this by 4. So our new center is going to be at 8, 4, and our radius is going to be at a 4. So the equation is going to be x minus 8 squared plus y minus 4 squared, and then equals 16. And we're going to skip drawing those two, um, but that's what your equation would look like. Looking at this one, June lives two miles north and two miles west of a tornado siren that can be heard for three miles in any direction. They're going to move the siren two miles south and increase it by a factor of 1.5. Will it still be audible at her house? So I'm going to draw a coordinate plane quickly. She lives north and west, so that's here. And it can be heard in three miles. And that's where it is, so its radius is a three. And so there it is right now. And they're going to move it two miles south. And so its new center is going to be here, but the volume is going to be increased by a factor of 1.5. And so right now it's a 3, so 3 times 1.5 is going to be 4.5. So its new radius is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. And then 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. And so if we draw it, is her house still going to be inside of the circle? That lower left or right half of the circle is terrible, but her house, as you can see, is inside the circle, so it will still be audible at her house. 
Okay, so now we're looking at lesson 97. We're going to deal with concentric circles. We've mainly just got some terms to look at because we haven't really dealt with that too much. And then we're going to look at some examples. So concentric circles are coplanar circles with the same center. They will not intersect. They have the same center but different radii. So there are two concentric circles. The center is the same, and then they have two different radii. So it says determine if the circles in each diagram are concentric. So if you look at this one, they have the same center, different radii. So yes. Looking at these two, do they have the same center? Nope. So they're not concentric. Looking at these two, we actually have three circles here. Are all of the circles in this diagram concentric? No, because we have two different centers, so those are not concentric. Looking here, it says to write the equation for the concentric circle shown. And how are they alike and how are they different? So the first thing we need to do is figure out the center. The center is at 2, 2. So we're going to have x minus 2 squared plus y minus 2 squared, and then equals the radius squared. On the little one, the radius is a 2, so we're going to have equals 4. And then on the bigger circle, we're still going to have x minus 2 squared plus y minus 2 squared. The radius now is a 4, so 4 squared would be 16. So how are they alike? They have the same center. How are they different? They have different radii. Okay. Looking at the next part is an annulus. The annulus is the region that's between two concentric circles. To find the area of annulus, you're going to subtract the area of the smaller circle from the area of the larger circle. And so here's our annulus. You see how we have two circles? The annulus is the shaded part around here. It's in blue. All of this is the annulus. So you're going to take the area of the big circle, and then you're going to subtract the area of the smaller circle from it. So we want to find the exact area of the annulus in these concentric circles. So when it says exact area, that means in terms of pi. So first we need to find the area of the big circle. Now the radius of the big circle is not 5. That's the part in between the two circles. This radius from the center out, this part is 8, and this part is 5. So the total is 13. So the area of the big circle is pi times 13. And then the area of the smaller circle is pi times 8 squared. Okay, so pi times 13 squared is 169 pi. Pi times 8 squared is 64 pi. And so if you subtract those, you get 105 pi. And it said exact area, so you want to leave it as 105 pi. You don't want to multiply it. You don't want to round it or anything like that. And then our units are inches squared. Okay. Looking at the next one, the bullseye of the dartboard shown has a 4.5 inch radius and each annulus beyond it is 2.5 inches. What's the probability of hitting only the shaded portion of the target? So what we need to do is to find the area of the whole target and then also find the area of the shaded part here. And I outlined the two circles in blue because it's kind of hard to tell which shaded portion they were talking about. So this length here is 4.5 and then each of these is 2.5 so if you add those up 4.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 it's going to be 12 and so the whole thing is going to be pi times 12 squared which is 144 pi. Okay, so now we need to only focus on these two smaller circles. The bigger of the two has a radius of 7. So we're going to have pi times 7 squared. And then the smaller one is going to have a radius of 4.5 squared. And so that's going to be 
49 pi and then 4.5 squared is 20.25 and so if you subtract those you get 28.75 pi so the probability of hitting the shaded portion well the shaded portion is 28.75 pi over the total which is 144 pi and if you divide those out you're going to get about 0.2 no, not percent. Sorry, just point two, or about twenty percent. Okay, so about two point two or twenty percent. Okay, so now we're going to look at some practice problems. Determine if the circles are concentric, and explain your reasoning. For the first two, they do not have the same center, so they are not concentric. Different centers, so not concentric. Write the equation of these concentric circles. So the center is at 3, 4. So we're going to have x minus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared. And then the radius of this one is at 1.5. No, it's not. It's at 1, 2. I'm sorry, 2. So 2 squared is going to be 4. And then for the other one, it has a radius of 1, 2. And so you're going to say x minus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 25. So how are they alike? Well, they have the same center, and then they have different radii. So that's how they're different. Look in at this one. Find the area in terms of pi of the annulus between the two concentric circles. So the bigger circle has a radius of 11. So we're going to say pi times 11 squared and then minus pi times 7 squared for the smaller circle. So that would be 121 pi minus 49 pi. And if you subtract that, you're going to get 72 pi. And then units are feet squared. Okay. Looking at B, using a board painted with concentric circles, What's the probability that it hits outside of the bullseye and outside of the dark shaded region? So the bullseye is this part, and the dark shaded regions are these. The central circle has a 2-inch radius, and each of these beyond has a 1-inch radius. So the total radius, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, is 7. So our total is going to be... 49 pi because you have 7 squared and then we want to know the probability that it hits only this part here so we're going to use this big circle as our big circle and then we're going to use this one as the smaller circle okay so this one's going to be our smaller circle and then we're going to use the big circle as our big circle so it's going to be 49 pi minus this radius is going to be 2 3 4 5 so that'd be 25 pi and if you subtract that, you're going to get 24 pi over 49 pi. And so those pi's will cancel, and you'll just have 24 over 49. So that's the probability that it would hit outside of that green circle that I just drew. All right, so looking at the challenge question. I can try this one, and then unpause the video, and I'll show you how to do it. Approximate probability of hitting a shaded portion of the target. Well... We know that it could have a total of 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's the total. We would have 64 n squared times pi area. And then this part would be 25 n squared pi. But it also could hit this circle out here. And so we would do... 64n squared pi minus the rest of it, which is 49n squared pi, because the radius of this part is 7. So if you simplify that, you're going to have 64 minus 49. 
n squared pi and then 64 n squared pi and so if you add those together in your numerator you end up getting 40 n squared pi over 64 n squared pi and if you divide those you're going to get 5 over 8 and so that would be the probability of hitting your shaded portion so for your homework you only need to do problems at 75 1 through 30 so make sure that you do that tonight so that we can go over any questions that you have tomorrow